Okay, this is what we're doing today. Um, that middle um, valley gutter, we're replacing that. What's happened is over time, it tends to have water sit in it. As you can see there, we had rain last night. And it gets micro holes. So at some stage, this has had a section replaced anyway. But you can see here, it started to get lots of little micro holes on in it that I had to patch. So we're going to replace this valley and we're going to put in one continuous valley, hopefully. If I can get it up here. And then we're just going to drop it into this little rain head, which is how they've done it. And then it just runs away. So that's the plan today. And I'll show you how that's done. Right, here's a new flashing. So we've got to get that up onto that roof. When I say we, I mean I. And it's a big flashing, so let's get to it. It's a bit of work and it's quite heavy. So we're just going to stand that up on the gutter. Um, it should stay rigid. Then we'll drag it up on the roof. Then we'll cut it and get rid of all the strapping because the dome shape keeps it rigid. As we pull up this flashing, there is this moss on the roof. It does make the roof a little bit slippery. It's worse if it's wet, but it's not wet today. Thank goodness we got a fine day. We had a big storm yesterday. So we are um, we're gonna pull it up. But just be aware, if there is this moss on your tiles, be very careful when you, um, when you walk on it. It makes it very, very slippery. Okay, so you can see we've got the flashing up it's just sitting on the roof waiting to be installed now we've got to get these flashings out now when I say these it's because that top flashing is actually on top of a bottom flashing so there's two flashings there now whether we remove both um, I'll have a look and see but um, generally I wouldn't put a top flashing on a bottom flashing unless it's color bond which gives you more protection against rusting from the underside. Okay, so you can see what's been happening. It's been leaking from the bottom up it's been rusting out so that's where your uh, leaks have been coming from so we'll remove both of these so that doesn't happen again Okay, so this is what we're left with after we removed everything. So we'll give that a really good clean down, make sure everything's off the wood and that the new flashing's gonna sit nice and flat on it. Now, these, this is Hardy Flex. And what we tend to do with that, I brought up another piece as well, is once we clean it off, we'll use that as a packer 
up the top to get the slope running down away and into that rain head and it's a great idea to do um, even if your slope is like one in 100 it stops water sitting in your box gutter so you're not going to get as much rust and it gets it away quicker um, so that's what we do the reason we use hardy flex is it um, even when it gets wet it doesn't degrade so that will stay at a 0.4 mil um, you can get it at 0.6 etc but generally we just pack it out with 0.4 to get the fall um, it's just what they do on the building sites because generally that's a product that gets cut and left over if you're doing eaves and they'll use it to line your box gutters to get that fall so that's how we'll do it Okay, so for the cuts of that, you can see what's happened. We've just continued the valley down so that that will come up at the back and the water will run onto it and away. Same on this side. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll slide that under, peel the plastic, and we'll actually seal and rivet all these before we fold the valleys back down and on top of them. So just in case you guys did wonder, Yes, I did a little bend up on that section that goes under the valleys. Again, it's just purely to stop it from blowing up and over. It's only a tiny one, and it's just to bounce it back down. That's all. Okay, so that end is now in. We've pushed it all the way up to there. Put it under that skylight so that it runs onto it. And then we've got it under this skylight. So the box cutter is effectively in place what we're doing now is just cutting this end um, we'll just play around with that till we get it in now if you're struggling or if you're thinking you're doing anything like this yourself what you can do is you use the old box cutter as a miner and it'll give you the correct cut for that um, that's one way of doing it and you'll find that with most box cutters so you can always use what the previous roof plumber did and if you did something wrong just slightly correct it so it's fixed um, but we'll just we'll cut that we'll bend it up and we've got to get it under that ridge there so that the water runs onto it Love it, that is so good. So happy with that. Okay, now I've got that in. I can work on this side here. 
is just bending it up and then I'm just cutting and putting it down and in. So this will be sweet. There you have it, we've tucked the lip under there. We have him all running down and into the rain head. General thought is that it flies down there. And now it's just a matter of, we've got to seal that side and put the uh, tiles back on. So there he is, that's that end done, uh, we've sealed him all up, down on the left you can see that and as we come down and around, we're going to come running down and we're going to drop straight into that rain head. Um, so he's all done, all we're left to do is put all our tiles on and we will have to point that ridge, that will be the final thing. There it is, all finished, all done. So it's all sealed, it all runs down past the skylight and into the rain head, drops away there. Okay, we've uh, pointed all the ridge. I try and do as little damage as possible when I take out the tiles so I don't have to point as much at that ridge. And apart from that, it's all done. So if you like this, please subscribe. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next.